In this video, I'm going to give you an update on using the iPad Pro as a tool for photographers. Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. I had previously made two videos about using the iPad Pro as a tool for photographers. In the first video, I talked about why I think the iPad Pro is such a great computing device. And in the second video, I showed you some of my workflows for editing photos and videos. I wanted to make this video for you because a few things have changed since then. So let's get started. So I have three things for you. Uh, the first thing is that in one of the previous videos, I had mentioned that I would bring my iPad Pro with me on my trips, and I would also bring a MacBook as a backup. It's actually been quite a few months since I stopped doing that. I'm no longer bringing the MacBook with me. And there are a couple of reasons for this. The first is that with the release of iOS 13, the iPad Pro has become even more capable than it was before. And so that's a great thing. Uh, the second thing is that I had made a video about a phone that I was using, uh, which is this phone, the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. And the reason I mention this is that this is actually now my backup device. So in other words, if something bad happens to my iPad Pro and I can't use it at all, uh, I am able to load photos onto this phone through an SD card reader and the USB-C port. And I have Lightroom uh, on the phone and uh, the phone has a stylus that I can use uh, for selective editing. Uh, and so I, I have tested this and I can use it uh, for editing photos. Obviously the display is much smaller uh, than, than the iPad, but it does work in a pinch. Now, of course, there are some things that you can only do on a MacBook, uh, on a computer that you, you can't do on the iPad, uh, but those things are very few and far between, as I mentioned in, in my previous videos. For me, uh, I can do 99.9% .9 of what I need to do on, on the iPad Pro. So uh, I don't bring the MacBook with me anymore, and uh, it's great, less to carry. The second thing I wanted to mention, uh, since we're talking about, especially uh, about the desktop side of things and computers, is that I had mentioned previously that we were waiting for Photoshop to come to the iPad, and that did happen. Unfortunately, it's been a little bit of a disappointment uh, because uh, it doesn't have all the features that we were hoping it would have. It uh, it does uh, apparently have the same code base that they are sharing between the two platforms, but they haven't actually enabled all of the features. Uh, so this has been a bit of a disappointment. However, as I mentioned in one of the previous videos, there is a great app called Affinity Photo on the iPad, and you can use that as an alternative to Photoshop, and it does work very well. But personally for me, uh, I am able to do most of what I need to do with Lightroom anyway, and so I'm, I'm fine. The third thing is that in one of the previous videos, I had mentioned that we were expecting that Adobe would update Lightroom after iOS 13 had been released by Apple so that you would be able to add photos into Lightroom directly from an SD card and that is all now possible. So I wanted to show you that and give you a few tips on that workflow. I'm going to show you now how to get photos off an SD card and into Lightroom on the iPad now that Adobe has updated Lightroom since the release of iOS 13. And as I mentioned in my previous video, even if you're not using SD cards, if you're using some other kind of storage card, as long as you have a reader that you can plug into the iPad, either it has a USB-C or even if it's USB-A and you just use a USB hub, uh, it'll all work fine. It's exactly the same process. So the change now is that if you look at the bottom right hand corner of the screen here where the little plus is, if I press on that, you'll see that there's now a new option that says from camera device and it's disabled right now because there's no SD card plugged in. So I'm going to plug in an SD card right now. And in fact, now you'll see that this dialogue comes up prompting you to import from the card. I'll cancel that and I'll just do this manually just so you can see now that when I go back to this menu from camera device is now enabled. So now if I select that you'll see here are a bunch of photos that I took of a very vicious polar bear that came in really close and I used the 135 G Master lens 
So these are all files that were taken with the Sony A7R4 using the compressed RAW format. So they're all about 60 megabytes in size and then you can see that there's 104 images. Now you can select whichever ones you want, but I'm actually going to select uh, all of them. So you can see how fast this is. So I'm going to select 104 60 megabyte files and I'm going to import them. Now you can see how fast this is. This is very fast. So this is going straight into Lightroom and you don't have to go through the Apple Photos app anymore. And once this process is finished, you have them in Lightroom and you can immediately start editing. So that, that's how easy it is. So we'll just let that keep going. It's certainly blazingly fast and it's it's great not to have to go through the Apple Photos app anymore. Okay, almost done. And now you have the option to either keep the cards uh, the sorry, the images on the card or to delete them, so I'll just say keep. And uh that's it. Now you just cancel out of this uh, option and there are the images in Lightroom. And uh, as I've demonstrated before, it's really so fast, you know, to be able to uh, to edit this stuff, right? Like it's just, it renders so quickly in uh, Lightroom on the iPad. It's just fantastic. There's one more thing I want to show you and that is how I handle backups with the iPad Pro. Specifically what I'm talking about is the case where I've taken my images off the SD cards and I've imported them into Lightroom, I've done all my editing, and now I want to delete the images from the SD card so that I can free them up. However, if I only have one copy of the images on my iPad and something happens to the iPad, if it gets destroyed, uh, then I've lost those images. So I wanna have a backup. So what we're going to do is back up the images from Lightroom to an external storage device. And in this case, it's an SSD drive. And the one that I use is a SanDisk Extreme SSD. It's great because it's waterproof and ruggedized. And uh, one of the things that's great about iOS 13 is that you can now plug devices like that straight into the iPad. So here's what we do is I've got these uh, images you'll see that I've already selected them in the album here and if I do export as and I select original here uh, that will export the raw files so I'll say OK it will now give me an option to save them to the files application now the files application is a file management application what I wanted to show you here is that if we have a look here, you'll see that there's a device here that says Untitled, and that is the SSD drive that's plugged in. However, I personally like to, rather than writing directly to the SSD drive, I find it better, I find a good practice to first make a copy on the iPad itself because it will write them out of Lightroom quicker. And I find that uh, SSDs are actually pretty fast, but I find, for example, if you've got an SD card in there and you try to write directly to the SD card, it's very, very slow. Whereas if you write it to the iPad first and then write it, copy it to the SD card, it's a lot faster. So uh, just let me show you how fast this is. So I, I have an empty folder here and I'm going to, there you go, it's done. So if we go to the files application and select that folder, you'll see there's all the raw files. Now, if I want to copy those now to the SSD drive, I'll just select them all, copy, go to the SSD drive, do a long press here so that this menu pops up, and then I hit paste, and there you go, it starts copying. Now, this is not lightning fast to write to the SSD from the iPad Pro. I'm not sure exactly 
where the bottleneck is. Uh, it, it gets it done in a reasonable amount of time, but uh, you can see it's writing a whole bunch of them at the same time. It's, right, it's trying to write, you know, 70 or 80 odd at the same time, and, and you can see that it's, it's getting them done. It's just not lightning fast, but it certainly does work. And this way you then have a backup of the images on your SSD, and uh, you've also got a copy on the iPad. Now, of course, if you have connectivity to the internet, then in Lightroom, uh, you'll also have your images getting backed up to the uh, Creative Cloud, uh, and then you've got a third copy as well. Just a quick run through the hardware and software I used in this demo. I'm using an iPad Pro running iOS 13.3. I was using the Lightroom app on the iPad. I also used the Files app briefly when I was copying the images out of Lightroom to get them onto an SSD. I read the images into Lightroom using the Apple SD card reader. I like that one because it has UHS-2 support, so if you're using UHS-2 cards, you'll benefit from that speed. I backed the images up to a SanDisk Extreme SSD, and I had all of this plugged into a USB-C hub. I particularly like this one, this Kingston Nucleum hub, because it has a USB-C port there. A lot of the USB-C hubs, for some reason, don't have other USB-C ports in them. And this one, it has actually two USB-C ports, one that allows you to supply power to the hub, so that's where you'd plug your normal charging cable into. And then you can also plug a USB-C device into that. Uh, and of course, it has USB-A ports, it has a HDMI out, it has a uh, SD card reader, even a micro SD card reader on there as well. Uh, one thing I should mention is that the SD card reader on that hub, as it seems to be with all USB-C hubs, it's only UHS-1. So I still recommend getting the Apple uh, SD card reader since it's UHS-2, but it's good to have that other one in the USB-C hub as a backup. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please post below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.